my name is Lorena, and if you've been struggling with sna <laughs> Slave Knight Gale in Dark Souls 3, this is the video for you. I am very confident about this strategy that I'm going to show you, and it's a very safe one with which you will be able to beat the boss with ease. If you're struggling, I highly recommend to never attack Gale, except for the specific situations that I'm gonna show you. For phase 1, if you feel like you just can't memorize his moveset and are having a hard time dodging, there is a simple and safe strategy to use. You can just sprint away from him. In most cases, this will get him to do a gap closing move on you, which is usually a long range jump attack. And these ones are the easiest to punish, since he will be open for you to attack him for some time. After having attacked, you can start running away from him again and repeat the process until you reach phase 2. Before giving you some more safe attack opportunities, let me talk about this one specific attack here. When he does his side swings, not only are they very delayed, which can feel super off, but he also sometimes follows it up with another side swing. In my opinion, there is no big visual cue to tell whether he will follow it up or not. So whenever you see him do this attack, just roll and run backwards. If you are not directly in front of him, he will never follow this one up. Okay, let's start with the attack opportunities. Number one. When he starts screaming, this is the cue for you to immediately sprint backwards. If you react fast enough, you won't even have to roll. Running will be enough. He always does a five attack combo here. You want to count to four and then roll in on the last one. This last one is a bit delayed as he seems to float in the air and then plunge down. So try to memorize the timing. If you roll into him here, you can get a couple of hits on him. Number two, the combo attack with a mini jump. He does two relatively quick attacks and then jumps backwards. This backwards jump is the cue for you to get ready for a long dashing swipe that will also leave him open for an attack. After you dodged it, of course. And of course, the long range jump attack that I talked about earlier. That will be number three. And lastly, he will also sometimes do these small jump attacks on the spot. Those are also a really good time for you to get some damage in. There is one very important general tip I have for you. You need to get used to most of his swings being really delayed. Just see it like this. Whenever you see him attack, there's a high chance you will be trying to dodge too early. Focus on his arm movements and the way he swings his sword. If you try to look at not the whole body itself, but the arms, you will have a much easier time getting the timing for the dodges right. Now, we're getting to phase two. Short intermission. I just realized something halfway through editing this video. I spent the entire day trying to figure out how I'm going to easily explain the entirety of his moveset, dissect it, and show you all the different combos. But then I realized that if you are really struggling and need help and then watch a guide, you don't want to be bombarded with information and you don't need to learn how to fight him like a pro. All you really need is a couple safe strategy tips that work consistently and patience. So, if you are watching this video, you, that one single guy who trashed every single one of my guides with an essay on how I didn't even explain all of the attacks and combos of the boss and how I am a trash player and I make trash guides. Um, there you go. Here's where you belong, sweetie pie. Get in there. So I scrapped all of the complicated stuff to focus on what's important. Now, the safe strategy for phase two is you want to rotate preferably to the right constantly, uh, but left works too. Stay at a medium distance, but do not go too far away. Because if you do, he will teleport behind you. Nothing personal, kid. But don't worry, even if it happens, what you'll do is you just run straight forward. No looking back, no rolling, just straight forward and after you've heard him miss his attack, turn back and lock onto him again. While rotating and keeping your distance, you want to roll his attacks to the side. Not into him, not straight backwards, but to the side. Or actually sideways and slightly backwards. Gale has many, many complex combos and as I said before, it'd be too much to dissect it all and explain. So all you need to know is the following. Attack opportunity number one. Whenever he does a two-part combo attack, pay close attention to his weapon arm. 
If he initiates a third attack, it's always going to be the same one, which is a heavy delayed forward lunge. Once you recognize the attack, which is easier if you look at his arm, roll directly into and behind him to deal some damage. Then dip out and start circling around like before. So number two. He can also do this lunge attack as a standalone move. If you have a fast weapon, you can roll into him here, attack once or twice and dip out again. If you have a heavy weapon, you can try if you have enough time, but you might get caught afterwards. Just try it out. Number three. He crouches down and does a double spin attack. You want to roll this one to the right and then attack and then get away again. The reason you want to roll this to the right is because of the way his cape moves. Number four. He crouches down and then jumps high up and lunges towards you after a short delay. You want to roll into this one too and then attack and then get out again. And lastly, number five, only if you have a fast weapon. When he casts the white discs, immediately roll into them towards him and then get behind him to not get hit by the discs. Aside from this being an attack opportunity, this is the way you dodge the discs anyway, even if you don't want to attack him. So after rolling into him, you can do one quick attack and then move further behind his back. And also for the arrows, just run sideways. It's usually better than rolling. You can also use a shield to block some of his attacks, especially the cape. But make sure you still keep moving sideways and don't ever try to actively block his attacks. Only use the shield as a backup while still running. So we're going to have a couple attack opportunities in phase three as well. Don't worry. Number one would be right at the transition into phase three. When he crouches down in pain, it's time to run towards him, get a few hits and then quickly get out of the way since he will explode with spirits that are ready to haunt you. Don't be afraid though, no matter which weapon type you're using, you will always have time to get in and get some hits and then dip out again. After attacking, simply either run or roll far away from this depending on how long you took to actually attack him. He will do this exact attack a couple times during the fight. So whenever you see him crouch down in pain, you know what to do. So attack opportunity number two. Whenever he does a three jump combo, you'll know this is your time to attack him. You can see this one coming when he crouches down a little bit and his cape wraps around him. So first, he jumps high up and closes the distance with a stab attack. He will then follow it up with a small jump and then immediately dashes backwards to then come at you with a gap closing slam. So once you see this combo start, you can just start sprinting backwards and you do not even need to roll if you react fast enough. So try and run away as far as possible from this combo. But if you find yourself being way too close, I recommend you to just memorize the timing of the attack because it's always the exact same. Remember the order of the jumps. Once you feel comfortable with the timing, you can use the very last jump to roll into him and deal some good damage. To bait out this jump combo attack, you can run away from him, make him teleport, evade the teleport by running straight as I mentioned in phase 2. And most of the time he will do this attack after having teleported and you're still too far away from him. So that's a really good way to trick him into doing this attack when you need it. I also need to mention he's got one variation of this attack where he charges up and does the double spin move like in phase two. But remember this, do not be fooled because this can be the start of this very jump combo attack as well. So only go in for an attack on this double spin in phase two, not in phase three. In phase three, you need to watch out for the combo attack that can come afterwards. You need to look out for one thing though. Don't confuse this one for another jump attack that he has. The one where he flies sideways first and then towards you. It might seem like this would be a good attack opportunity, but most of the time he's going to immediately follow this one up with one of his other attacks. So that's a no, no. Attack opportunity number three. He does a regular attack, then jumps up high while shooting his crossbow. He will then jump up another time and then slam on the ground. 
if you roll into this last slam, you can get a couple hits in. And the last good attack opportunity would be after he's finished a combo with his forward lunge, just the same way I described it in phase two. And if you feel like the lightning is coming too close, reposition yourself by running away for a bit and then try engaging him again. One last tip. Gale is incredibly weak to poison. And if you want to be boring, you could just spam him with poison mist. But if you want to make it a bit more interesting, you can apply a poison resin to your weapon to deal some extra damage, but still be, you know, fighting him properly. I very highly recommend you to just watch the video again because it's just a lot of information. So please be patient with me and of course with yourself. Thank you so much for watching. That was it for today. If you have any more problems, struggles, or even suggestions for more bosses I should be making a guide on, feel free to tell me in the comments. And most importantly, if you like it here, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. And if you're interested, you can follow me on Twitch. I stream there almost every day.